Brothers and sisters, Brother John here, watchman for that great day. Prepare, take your earbuds out, and get ready for the sound of the shofar to commemorate this very day, Yom Kippur 2018, end of 6,000 years. This is the day. brothers and sisters well I'm here again back at my post sharing with all of you what I believe is the end of the age and definitely a marker today is not to be overlooked and thought of as just another day today is very special According to the book of Jubilees, uh, chapter 6, verse 35 through 38, it tells us that in the end of days, in the last coming years, um, that the trumpets would be blown 10 days too soon. Now this can be somewhat confirmed, I believe, by um, Brother Nick Vandalorn because it's the same area of timeline he just had yesterday as being Yom Kippur, uh, which who knows, because if everything is off, we're kind of in an area of, uh, you know, we're, this is all part of, of watching, all right? We are definitely, without doubt, in these last moments of time, in the last days, um, not months, not months, not even maybe weeks, but I'll say at least not months, okay? So, weeks could go a month, yes. But I've got to just share my heart with you. And ever since I've seen that the, the time of Sukkot identified as, I'm sorry, the time of, of Yom Kippur identifying the jubilee year and that it can only go for one year because that's a, that's the acceptable year of the lord all right that one year and it can only go a year all right so at some point a year comes to an end yes some years the jews add an extra a month to their year that's not that's a, a fact but the, the fact of that is they add the month at the end of the year, just before the new year of God's calendar, Nisan 1, starts. So it never affects the actual um, feasts. All right. Now, if the rapture is going to happen on a feast or in the time um, of a feast, all right, like many of us believe and, and look at, I've always believed it was imminent. I don't believe that it's on any particular feast day. It doesn't have to be, in other words. Just because a feast has to be fulfilled, God can have many ways to fulfill that particular feast. So, we know that the first four feasts have been fulfilled, but I do believe that the last three feasts will be fulfilled during the tribulation. You know, the, the time period of tribulation. So. What are we really waiting for? We're waiting for a trumpet sound, all right? Now, there's many ideas of, of uh, is this, uh, you know, you can look at many scriptures that talk about a trumpet being blown by an archangel, um, the trump of God, um, how, how we'll be changed at the last trump. There's, there's, there's a lot of uh, scripture that points to a trumpet blowing. The only other place besides the two places I just mentioned as, as one of them being um, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16, 17, also um, 
uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52, talks about the being changed at the last trump, is the only other place that there's really, and besides blowing the trumpet on the new moon and all of that, there's, there's many of that. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is the, the timing wise, as far as trumpets being blown, really goes right to Revelation because that's, there's, a, there's a time where seven trumpets are blown. And I've been looking at this and, and, and thinking about it and, and being led by the Spirit. I'm kind of seeing that the first trumpet that's blown is like for us it will be that, that trumpet because it is by an archangel. There's seven angels that get seven trumpets. So the first angel blows his trumpet and hail and fire mingled with blood. I heard a good definition on a, a, a video that I saw, oh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, about the actual effects of an EMP hitting the earth. And right now there is a, I just watched something on um, sus, uh, Suspicious Observer's channel this morning about a uh, uh, an EMP or a coronal hole that no one's been, you know, not even NASA, uh, there's evidence of it but there's not really any uh, news of it, except for on Suspicious Observer. And that, that um, EMP or whatever should be here entering uh, the area of Earth next week, okay? So it brings us a week from now, all right? It brings us till maybe next week. So we got, whether that has anything to do with, with the timing or not, what I'm trying to say is there's things happening literally around us and I'd like to read you a a scripture and it's in Luke 12 56 and it's I'm going to read a couple different versions of it because it's really important for us so let's see I'll read all right well the King James version is ye hypocrites ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. How is it that ye do not discern this time? In other words, he was talking about when he was, you know, the visitation of Jesus. Now in Matthew 16, 3, it says, In the morning, Jesus is talking to the, to these hypo, to the Pharisees, In the morning, to, you're saying, In the morning today it will be stormy, for the sky is red, and overcast. Ye know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but not the signs of the times. Now, Jesus was basically remarking to these people that they could tell the weather real easy. They could look at it, they could say, well, because the sky is red and lowering, it's going to be a bad day or whatever, okay? Uh, foul weather, whatever. But brothers and sisters, we're not children of the dark that we would that we would miss this day in other words we're children of light so that day will not take us by surprise so when he was talking to one group really you could say the Pharisees were the the unwise virgins all right and the the people who have the light in them got the got the oil of God you know the oil the wise virgins there's five unwise and five wise and so there's the, the five that are unwise that can discern the weather, but they don't know the signs of the times. And then there's those five wise, which is the people that are watching now, all right? The people, the brothers and sisters that are filled with the Spirit, that are watching now and ex expecting with all their heart, myself included, that today is the day. Today, tomorrow, we're right in a period of a couple of days here where we're really focused on this is more than high watch this is today is the end of 6,000 years God has said in his in in his word in, in, in Genesis 6 3 that man's flesh uh, that, uh, that it, it says this God says my spirit there it is my spirit what is what is God's spirit the Holy Spirit my Holy Spirit will not always strive with man, for he, for he is also flesh. 
but his days shall be 120 years. All right? So the connection, of course, is that the 6,000 years, 50 times 120 equals 6,000. There's a reason for that number. You know, no matter which way you look at it, 50 jubilees times 120 equals 6,000. Numbers don't lie. They're correct, accurate, and precise. Today, my friends, is the end, if not already, the day of 6,000 years has come to the marker. It's ended. So now what? Now we wait. Though it tarry, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, though it might tarry, all right, because it could have been tarrying before this, you understand? We've been many places where we've used this scripture over and over as, well, though it tarry, wait for it, for it will surely come and not tarry, for it is yet for an appointed time. An appointed time. Are we not on an appointed time right now? If truly... If the book of Jubilees is accurate and it is shown that we're 10 days off, today is the end of 6,000 years. Is that not an appointed time when God will um, uh, put into motion his hand, all right, to, is he going to do something in the earth before we go? I believe that. But the, the time of him striving is over. That's what this is saying. That's, what the, that's what's happening now. His time of striving is over at 6,000 years. And then the new millennium, that day, all right, the very day of the start of the 7,000 years begins. Is that today? That's the question. And if it is, what will we see? What are we about to experience this is incredible. This is, this is, I, I have been in a place, I have been in a place of, of depression and rejoicing at the same time. I don't know how that can be. How can you be rejoicing and happy and glorifying God and yet being like a heaviness upon your heart and, a, and upon you? Weakness in a way. Your body feels weak and, and just, I don't know. I've never, it, it, I've never had this sensation before, and yet I know that we're close because that's probably why the sensation is happening to me, and I can't explain it. I just can't explain it. It's, it's unexplainable. I wish I could explain it, but it's not necessarily sorrow, but it is, and it's not necessarily, you know, over-the-top rejoicing, but it is. Ah. <sighs> So, if you don't know by now, that it's September. And when does September end is the question. Well, we just ended, if today is correct, today is the 29th of September, which leaves us one day. All right? Only one day. Is it going to happen? It's the question mark, and we're all hoping our... All our chips are in the, you know, all our eggs are in that one basket again, like other times, all right? And this time is just because of all the signs that we're aware of, you can only have just so many signs, 70 years. Right now it's 70 years, 4 months and 12 days or 13, 14 days since Israel celebrated their 70th anniversary. So we're into the 70th year of the fig tree. Look at it that way couple months more will be 70 and a half. You get it? So December is like a, 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 is, uh, 70 and a half years of Israel since they became a nation. It's amazing. So, I don't know. I, all, I, all I can share is this. If the hypocrites didn't know the signs of, you know, the signs, and they knew this, the, yet they knew the sky, and they knew the, the weather, and we're seeing uh, evidence of crazy weather and, and cyclones and, and something about a, a, a typhoon that I just heard about this morning. 400 people died in this typhoon. Um, 
in J I guess it was Japan, Japan or India. I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't. I just breezed across the the uh, the video. But um, I just I can't help it. There, we're in a time now where we're to be watching. All right, we're to be watching. Are we going to get? I don't want to get to the point if we're here on the second of October, all right, and nothing's happened yet. It's the day after the first day of, uh, you know, the, the eighth day. But we're looking at a we're looking at a period of time, and and I'm trying to, as a human being, <laughs> as a man of God, as a as someone who studies the scriptures constantly and just longs to be with God, everything in me is saying September. And we're just about done with September. Now, the eighth day is in October. And you understand that I've, I've been like solidly on the month of September just because it's the fall feast. We're in the 70th year, brothers and sisters. <laughs> what does this mean? Something has got to happen, and soon. So with that, let me bring up a little video that a sister of mine shared with me that remembers. And I'll let you watch this for a moment, and then we'll talk again. This Let's see. Can you guys see that? I guess, hold on. There we go. I'm sure you, if you haven't seen this this sister before, uh, she is very interesting, and she gives us a. And it's here you go. Ready, ready to go. Watch this. I would like to share that my five-year-old son had about a month ago. I feel the need to share this with as many people as possible. Now this was in uh, this was June of 2015. So understand it was three years ago. Before I tell you, I want to point out that he's never had a dream like this before and had no prior knowledge about the rapture or second coming or anything of that nature. Furthermore, he has Asperger's syndrome, otherwise known as autism spectrum disorder. He woke up one morning and immediately began telling me about a quote unquote scary dream he had. When he started telling me about his dream, he was a little scared, but that soon changed to excitement. He was so excited when he told me. He said people were floating up in the sky. He said that Jesus knew where we were and made a hole in the roof. He said that we were floating up slowly and then we went boom and went up really fast. He said it was like we had rockets on our feet. I have a four-year-old son, that's exactly what he would say too. He said it was like we had rockets on our feet. He said that some people went with the good angels and some people went with the bad angels. He told me that Jesus was fighting a bad guy that wanted to be like God and that the bad guy wants people to say F words. He said that Jesus defeated the bad guy and locked him in a cage with gray bars. He put a gold lock on it and he didn't remember seeing a keyhole on the lock. That's a, that's a strange detail that he remembers so much detail. Uh, he said that we went to heaven and he saw a bright light. He said there was no need for light as there were real fire candles and glow stones. That reminds me of the seven candlesticks that it, it says is before the throne of God, um, the seven spirits of God. He said that Jesus made us strong and sick proof. Then he told me that Jesus knows what we like to eat and that there are no cars in heaven. He said that Jesus read the Bible to all of us and baptized us all at the same time. After he told me his dream, he asked if it was Sepper. So I asked go. him, what did he mean? He got very mad and asked me again if it was Sepper. And I said, September? And he said, yes, mommy. Is it Sepper in the world? And go. I said, no, it's not September yet. I told him it was May. He was very concerned about it being September and seemed very frustrated. He has since uh, not had another dream since. And she goes on to ask about, you know, will the rapture, ha rapture happen in September? All right. Now, notice it was May. That's important. Notice it was May. 
and the little boy was talking semper all right and it was September now this was three years ago all right this was just before the the last blood moon you know the summer would come and go and September would come and then the, the final blood moon of the tetrad it was in May that the dream happened May we don't know what day but May is just generally May is when Israel was a nation for as of the to, uh, as of May fifteenth, twenty fifteen, right would have been what sixty seven years old, right? Three years from that time, right here we are, okay. We're three years away from that time, and so there's there is what I started out saying, ye hypocrites. You can recognize the 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 weather, but the signs. You cannot recognize. The sign of the times you cannot recognize. Well, we've had 2014, 2015, the, the, the lunar eclipse, tetrad, you know, that ties into Passover and Tabernacles. We've had that. That's a sign. We had all of what was happening during the time of Obama. We had at the end of 2015 when the last... Um, uh, lunar eclipse was happening, we had the Pope and the UN, and all of the things that have been going on constantly, all right? That was 2015. 2016 comes along and Trump throws his hat in the, in the ring and, you know, the whole thing comes along and we, we get a new president. As of December of 2017, we now have a reckoning of Jerusalem is the undivided capital, and yet there's all of these signs, all right? We had the, the solar eclipse on the 21st of August. We had the September 23rd uh, uh, Revelation 12 sign. We've had many other signs, but if you get what I'm saying, we could recognize the weather. We could recognize if it's going to be nicer or, uh, you know, overcast and rainy or, or, or sunny. But how many people recognize these things as being the signs of God's coming, all right, of our time? Because we know that back in June, when we were looking at the 21st of June, because it was nigh summer, in the 70th year by that point, Israel is now the 70-year fig tree, and that's the generation. And we knew by the 21st of, of June that that would start summer. And we were looking at it before summer happened as before summer because it's not when it's summer, but when summer is nigh, what are you supposed to do? The reason is you're supposed to look up when summer is nigh. So looking up. So people have been looking up every summer, you know, or when summer is nigh from the time of Israel becoming the fig tree. But now we're at the 70-year marker as of last June or May, all right? So notice when she said May, and she posted this video in June, and the little boy was talking about Semper, which is September. This is important, brothers and sisters, because this is the, I just told you, the reason for this video is that we're I'm marking, I'm, I'm uh, uh, ceremonializing, or uh, what do you call, memorializing this day, all right? If nothing else, one video out of many, that will memorialize that today is the 6,000 year end. And then we can go into, into Thessalonians. Let me go there. Let me go up into the Thessalonians thing here. Because this is, this is going to tie into God's Spirit. How God's Spirit will not always strive. We can go there. Right? Let's go to Second Thess. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and that's verse 7 I think it's verse 7 yeah for the mystery of iniquity doth already work all the way back in the time of Paul and even before that only he who now letteth will let what do you get when you read that he who now letteth who's letting it's God right is God letting is God not striving for 6,000 years with man? He surely is. Is 6,000 years at an end? It surely is. 
what is he striving with? Is God in person? Well, yes, God in person is striving with man. But what is it that is striving with man? God's spirit. This is the spirit that we have in us. We have the Holy Spirit. And what this is saying is only he, the spirit of God, who now letteth, will let, or will allow, until he, the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, be taken out of the way. So, brothers and sisters, we're at the point of being taken out of the way. You understand? To be taken out of the way is to be transformed, raptured, whatever you want to call it. But the, the time of, of glorification of the body of Christ is at hand. That's what I'm looking at. Whether we're here for a little bit of time, or whether we're snapped out of here, it does not matter. You know why? Because once you're given your glorified body, you're no longer in this world, even if you are. Even if we're, we're literally living vessels that are on this earth, but yet glorified. We're glorified in Christ. We're glorified by a, by a, a transformation, all right? In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, all right? At the last trumpet. Suppose that we're glorified, we're changed, all right? And that trumpet's got nothing to do with the trumpets of, of the eight trumpets, uh, I'm sorry, the seven trumpets in Revelation. I'm just stuck with the seven and the eight because today is the seventh month and we're in the seventh day of Sukkot and it's the eighth day, the last great day tomorrow. And that would be the 22nd, 21st, 22nd of Tishri. All right? I'm just, I'm amazed. So all I know is Semper. We're now in Semper. I think we should all going around telling people that we're in Semper. <laughs> Something's going to happen in Semper, I think. And that just gives us between today and tomorrow, brothers and sisters. If we wake up Monday morning, that is the at last great day. That is the feast of the ingathering. That's Shemini Ataretz for the Jewish believer. All right, on their calendar, which is still 10 days off. Realize that. Because if we just finished Yom Kippur now, all right, which is the 6,000 years, we're counting off how many days? Another five days until, until um, tabernacles. All right? So in some ways, the Jews are celebrating tabernacles now, but we're, we're not. We're celebrating Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur just came because we're going on a different calendar because of what Jubilees has said. The book of Jubilees says that 10 days off. So we're still in a time frame. And so it rolls out. It actually gets close to the October the 5th or 6th where you're in, you're in Tabernacles. Let me look at my, my calendar real quick because of course you have to keep track of future days. So where the the seventh day of tabernacles, uh, future from now, by 10 days, is going to be on the 9th of October. The 10th of October would be the eighth day, all right? So I don't plan on putting up my October calendar until September, Semper is over. <laughs> God bless that little, well, he's, he's now eight years old, all right? So he was five years old at the time, but now he's eight. So, God bless that little boy, and God bless his mother, and God bless that sister for reading the dream. This is, this is the kind of clues that are, that are given to us, and not to be forgotten, because God remembers all these things. All the things that have happened since 2014, 2015, and the awakening of people, you know, coming uh, uh, alive and realizing that the coming of the Lord is right at hand, he's not forgotten these things. These are evidential to the Lord. He knows. He knows that we're waiting. He knows that we're weary and tired. He knows that we long for him and to be with him. He knows that we battle with, with evil still. He knows that we battle with the flesh still. Brothers and sisters, this is a hard time because we're truly, those that are just anticipating are just with everything in them, 
the only thing that matters to us is that the Lord returns and or does something. Let's but we're looking that not necessarily returns, because that return is coming the second time future. The the God's word timeline points that out. So all I can say is is I'm a I'm a humble servant as far as as far as what God gives someone, when God gives you something, you're to be humble and and just bring it to the people. So that's all I can do. And it's very difficult when God gives you something because most people don't want to they don't want to accept it. But it's not a matter of accepting me or my my uh, calculations, okay? But it is a matter of accepting God's word, and God has promised. That is a promise, brothers and sisters. When six thousand years comes to an end, it's going to start the seventh day, because a day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So, we know that we're waiting on a thousand year rule and reign with Christ, that is going to be transformative to the world. The world's not going to be the same when something literally goes down and it's soon to happen. And I still believe that it's semper. It is until October 1st. Okay? So, what more can I say? We're all in the same boat together. We're all watching and waiting for our Lord most people think we're absolutely nuts. I mean, you can't even, even the normal, regular Christians, just, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear that, you know, especially because many dates have come and gone. You know, you know how long you've been saying that, John? Yes, I do. And I'll continue to say things until we are home. All right? Because that's, that's part of watching. That's part of watching. Yes, it's hard. But my hope is that September will not end. And if I wake up Monday morning, I guess that's the the day that that is the eighth day, and I guess that that starts me into the month of October. So if he doesn't come on the eighth day, I'm looking to the second or third. All right. Remember, we're close now, brothers and sisters. It's not time to abandon ship. It's not time to fall away, although many will. All right? It's time to continue to watch and be strong because, remember, those that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as eagles. All right? And they shall run and not fall. They shall walk and not be weary run and not fall. Alright? So, God bless you all. I'm going to blow the shofar, and God bless you, Sister Gigi, Brother Todd, uh, Sister Darla, um, many of the other, uh, Brother uh, Keith from, from Many Fish. I just, I'm, I'm blessed to have you guys as my friends and my, my family, and uh, and all of you out there that are watching and have written in my comment box, I love you all. And um, thank you uh, for your gifts. And uh, I can use more, always. Okay? But I, I love you, and I thank you for mostly for your prayers. Because the, the situations and, and times I'm in at this point are just... That's one reason why I'm just looking for September to happen and we're out of here or we're changed, okay? Because I'm, but I'm fearing not. I'm not going to fear and I'm not going to worry about the, the things that are coming, all right? But we can see them coming. And so this is also part of watching as you see that day approaching, you know, forsake not the fellowshipping of us coming together. And this is the way we come together on this format. So I don't go to church, and I, I know a lot of you that don't go to church because people don't want to hear what we got to say. That's why this community is so um, strong, because we back each other up, we watch over, we pray, 
we bless. All right? So be blessed. All right? I pray a blessing on, on my family today. In Jesus' name, Father, that you would just touch each and every one of us, strengthen us. You have promised that when this time comes that we would not be surprised by it, that this day would not take us by surprise, and that your hand of favor and grace and mercy and blessing would be upon all of us. As this day approaches, we only long to be with you and to and let this world uh, have their eyes opened and do it quickly, Lord. In Jesus' name, save our families. Watch over the the children of our of of our brethren, all of the all of our children, my children, and all of my brothers and sisters' children, and all of my brothers and sisters all together. This is the body of Christ. We are speaking in Jesus' name, and we are. Uh, asking for the blessing of God to be upon us this day as your as this day marks the 6,000 year end and that your spirit will not strive anymore so whatever that means as far as your spirit not striving with man I believe that we're truly on the verge of receiving your outpouring dear God so pour out upon us, Lord, the oil, the extra oil that we need, that we need. We, we ask for that extra outpouring. Just like Elisha asked Elijah that when he saw Elijah go, that he would receive a double portion. I ask for that because I'm sure we all need it, and me included. So, Father, I do pray in Jesus' name that the blessing would be upon all of my brothers and sisters that watch this video. And let me blow the shofar and let this shofar break the yokes of bondage that are on all that always seem to creep back. You ever notice that? You can hear the trumpet sound. You can have those, those, um, those yokes broken. And then a few days later, you got this ah, whatever. So I ask that this be anointed and that this goes forth as the breaking of the yokes, also as a marker for the end of 6,000 years. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> sisters brother John watchman for that great day hope to see you in person in the spirit as the outpouring comes between today and tomorrow I'm really believing for this so God bless you keep watching if we wake up Monday morning we will be in October no matter what we're in the eighth day but we'll be in October so let's pray that God pours out, and even in the next few days, all right? If it's not on Monday, perhaps Tuesday or Wednesday, but close. Very, very close. So don't give up and be blessed, all right? So, Brother John, watchman for that great day.